In June 1946, a young girl by the name of Muriel Drinkwater was murdered within this vicinity. She was beaten about the head, she was raped, seriously sexually assaulted and shot through the chest. To this day, Muriel's murder has never been found. Today, with the help of psychic medium Diane Lloyd Hughes, we're going to try and unravel the events of that brutal day. What are you actually picking up at this point now, Diane? What I'm seeing is a little girl. And what I'm, I can see is pure white legs. So this little girl wouldn't have had a suntan. Mm. She looks quite young for her age. She's shown me herself skipping over and over again. Very, very happy child. And she showed me herself with summer clothes on, if anything, and her hair tied up. And to me, the bow that she's got in her hair is a bow of a parcel because it's crispy and it's got sh shiny tinsel around the edge of it. Well, like a Christmas bow? Exactly like a Christmas mm. bow. That's exactly how I'm seeing her. Well, like, it sounds like a homemade bow. Um... To me, it's come off a Christmas parcel. Right. Skipping, singing, um, love to sing. And I get, oh, I'm getting quite emotional because I could hear, I could hear so clear and she's la 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 and she's uh. why the fascination with this particular area or the bridge that she's actually brought us up to now okay i'll ask her the question my friends she's saying my friends and she's pointing down okay okay pointing down that way that's right I'm seeing her with um, oranges. Um, she showed me bright oranges and she showed me shillings. She would have got money for fruit. Right. She would have got money for fruit. So she's showing me. Okay, okay, she's getting over excited. And eggs. And also she showed me. Um, I okay, okay, she's getting over excited and trying to show me. I'd even go as far as saying jars of things. So to me, she made money here. She made money with shillings. And my friends, she's waving. So uh, waving she, she used to wave at people down there. Okay, right. let's keep walking. Well, we've got the railway line down there. Okay. She showed me herself going down the steps too. So she would have run down the steps and sat on those steps quite often. She wasn't allowed to go right the way down. Why there, though, Dan? Why? Her friends. She made shillings there, she's saying. But to who and what? The men with the picks. There was men with picks, so it would, it would be men working, my friends. Like a railway worker. Uh, I presume being on a railway. But, uh... They were all my friends. She's saying she didn't always wear her gloves. And I'm showing a pair of gloves, but I'm, I'm, I'm showing a pull in one of the gloves. And she was playing with a little pull on, the, on there's a little bit of wool coming out of the gloves. So she showed me that little bit. She had a little hat on, and her, she's saying that her friends would pull a hat down. It was like a little pixie hat, and they would pull the hat down and try and cover her eyes. Friends in school, she's saying. Mm. Oh, she's getting so anxious. She, she wants to take me up there, but then she's saying she doesn't. OK, OK. Make sure you hold my hand then, she's saying. So she's getting over anxious about walking up here. She got a bit afraid here, she's saying. And when she was afraid, she had the coat on and the gloves and the little pixie hat, which was sitting tidy then. OK. All the way through, I'm asking her a name as well. And what I'm, to be honest with you, she's saying Mew, Mew all the time. After school, I felt that was the time where something happened to her. Because the way she showed me herself walking up is as if she was aiming to go home. So I feel she was trying to aim to go home this way. And where she'd normally be here, enjoying herself with a basket. 
she showed me herself walking up here with a coat on and a hat on and her gloves on. See Muriel's here, see Muriel's here. So that's the name then, Muriel, we got. Okay, oh, she's very pleased about that. Okay. Excellent. The stomach's going to be feeling very anxious about it. Okay. As I'm looking here now, she showed me it was... I know the sun was shining, it was green, it was still muddy. She thought it was going to rain again. She's saying there was rain then, so it was a rain. OK, let's try and get this again. She was saying, OK, what's she trying to say? Summertime. It was summertime. Hello? Uh, she showed me herself with a coat and a hat. It was summertime. But it had been raining either that morning or definitely the day before because she... She's given me the name Tommy as well. Would he be a friend of hers? Somebody she knew, Tommy, Tom, or somebody she called Tom. The man was up here, so there's been a man up here, so there's some gentleman up here with her. Okay. She was trying to go home from school, so she keeps taking me up here. Okay. What type of age have you got? When you, when you think about her, or when you see her in these little pictures that you see, could you pinpoint an age? Okay, I'll ask. To me, she looks very young for her age. To me, she looks about nine, but she's saying 12. And she's talking about her birthday now. I love birthdays. I'm sensing a gentleman close to her. OK. Is this Tommy you mentioned earlier? This man, she knows this man. As I'm walking, if you can imagine, as I'm looking up here now, I'm seeing her going ahead. And I'm seeing a, a man close to her. There's somebody who's trying to talk to her. There's a, there's a gentleman who's trying to talk to her. She wasn't feeling very comfortable with him there. I feel that she knew him. She definitely knew him. Now, from behind, I've seen a chap with mousy coloured hair. So, Sandy colour, could even be sandy, gingery, sandy, sandy coloured hair. A thick set boy, so it could be twenties. A black heavy, heavy jacket on, a short box, heavy jacket on, thick. He's around her, he's hovering around her. Not quite touching her, but he's definitely around her, I'm seeing. So it's a gentleman with um, a heavy jacket on, a Hessian type heavy jacket, square pockets. Okay, the picture I'm showing is he's, he's standing close to her, so she's aware of him being there. Mm -hmm. He hasn't touched her. Keeps asking her name over and over again. And she's trying to rush off all the time. The way I'm seeing him is the, the heavy jacket. She, she knows him, she, she's seen him before. I hey, keep trying to ask her where's he come from. And she's going quite... He tried to follow me, so somebody's trying to follow her. He's normally... She show, she's saying he's normally with other men, so he's normally with another two men. He's always there with them, he's, he's on his own. The way she's shown me the picture, he, he could have worked on the railway. With There was two other men. She keeps show, picturing, picturing the railway two other men and him. But as a man that would have held his head down, so he's coming across as if he was quite young, quite shy when he was with these men. Mm. I don't feel he's talked to before like he is now. But she would have possibly known the other two men. Yes, yeah, she says she's seen him before. And I believe they would have given her shillings. What for fruit or eggs? Yes, something she had in her basket. She's rushing up here now. She's got socks <coughs> around her ankles. As I'm seeing her going up. OK. She's trying to walk ahead of him and he keeps walking at the side and he's trying to talk to her, but he's holding his head down low. He's, he's wanting to grab her hand all the time. OK. Oh, she keeps showing me a farm over there. As I'm looking at her, I'm looking at a farm. 
the view I'm seeing now is some sort of a farm. If you could imagine myself, I'm looking through her eyes. I'm seeing a farm. I'm trying to grab her belt of a coat, so she definitely had a coat on. Right, okay. It's pushing her over here. So the image I've gotten is that she's been pushed over here. What I'm seeing now is a hand. A hand. He's got big, chunky hands, and I'm seeing a hand put behind a head. I've got a hand behind her head and I've got one over her mouth. So he's pulling her along, he's taking her over here all the time. So he's, and I, my feet are not touching the ground. They're not, they, 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 they're going like this. Okay. He's pulling her down. So he's pulling her, okay. What I'm seeing is a hand behind the head and he's practically, he's lifting her up by her head and pulling her down. I want to go, she keeps saying over and over again. Okay. He's, a hard, he's got hard hands, he's got hard skin on his hands, he's putting his hands over her eyes too. Okay. Keeps pushing her back down over again, over again. He's, he's hurting her legs, he's pulling her legs apart, he's hurting her legs. And that's what I'm seeing is white legs, white legs. She's showing me an underwear, so he's pulling something down. And what I'm seeing her pull down is something, um, it could be big, big pants, pulling something down from her. She's saying her bottom's hurting. She's hurting, he's hurting her, physically hurting her. And the image I'm seeing is... It's dreadful. It's okay. absolutely terrible. It's terrible, what I'm seeing is really bad. It's something in his pockets too. Um, he's got, um, okay, like gingery freckles, um, okay, he's not old, I would have thought he's in his 20s, around that age, because I'm seeing gingery, blondy hair and, and freckles. She knew him, she definitely knew him. Okay. Keeps pushing at her, pushing at her, pushing at her all the time, she can't get up. Nice she put her ground. head, yeah, she put her head too. She's all hurt, all hurt around her bottom, around here. She's all hurt. So he's actually assaulting her. He's hurting her backside. <gasps> he's a heavy man, but young. He shot her. <sighs> just left her. He shot her. He just left her there. There, literally there. I can see her gloves. <sighs> He had a gun. Definitely shot her. Okay. And I, I'm seeing the gun um, uh, with, the, with the little barrel thing on it. Um, um, long, long. It's a, it's a, a gun, pistol, a, a gun. Um, an old fashioned gun. Well, the image I'm seeing now, she was shot. Her coat is still there, her gloves, everything is not there, and she's looking at herself. So she died straight off. And she wanted to go home. She's very much still in this area. I just keep asking my guides to help me you now, to show me the man again. Dark trousers. Your jumper's on underneath, jumper's on. He's come from a farm. He's come from a farm, we keep being told. And I feel he had his dad's gun. He come from a farm. The image I'm seeing is like a jippo. That's the image I'm seeing. Uh, was whether his father was somebody that travelled. Gingery hair, fairish hair. Okay. And every time I'm asking, is he from the area? Not always. So he's somebody could have could have worked here for a while and then went back, or stayed with relatives and then went back. So he's come from away and he stayed with relatives and had to go back. But he had his father's gun. There was one bullet missing from his gun. Don't feel he was very well educated. Okay, keep asking. I believe he's still alive. I believe he's still alive. So I feel he's 80 something. I believe he's still alive. He's sitting there, I can see him clear as, as if I'm looking at you. 
I could see him clear as a bell. He's sitting in a chair and he's an old man today. So the young man is now an old man. He's still alive. This man is still alive. She keeps saying, I know he's there. He's definitely still on this earth. He's definitely still here. She wants, she wants him found. She wants this man found. I don't feel it was ever resolved properly. She came from away, she's saying, Uncle Bill living away, Uncle Bill. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if you come from um, Redden area or, I keep seeing the word Redden. Every time I'm asking my guides, show me that. I keep asking her not to show me herself because I'm seeing it. And the legs apart, white, and lying there on the ground. And her spiritually sitting at the side, looking at herself all the time. And just walks away, literally just walks away. He's definitely still alive though, I can see him sitting in the chair, a bit of a pot. David or Davis? Could have been in his name. Could have been in his name. Maybe a surname, maybe a first name. And a Walter. In a Wal and a Walter. And the name Walter keeps coming to mind, so that's in relation to his family. Somebody called Walter. He's living away, he's living in his own. I feel that he's been living with a lady, or oh, we've had two ladies in his time. Okay, I'm asking my guides to help me now. In fact, I'm asking any policemen, any inspectors that's passed away to help me, to show me this man, how he is today. He's had a bit of a heart problem, this man have. Um, we've had problems with the hernia as well. Okay, guys, come on, show me. He's living on his own, he's TV mad. He's done nothing since. This man's got to be found. Tell the policeman to find me. So that's what she wants. And I'm just showing an old type of uniform. I love her. She wants to be found. What Diane has come up with today has been absolutely incredible. All these findings are now going to be passed on to retired detective superintendent, Mr. Roy Davis, who's going to comment on these psychic findings. Well, it was fascinating. Um, I, was, I was quite impressed, really, um, especially when she uh, said all the details, and, uh, which included the description of, uh, of Muriel Drinkwater. Um, she said that she described her coat as a navy colour, which was, which was a fact. Um, she described her, she was wearing gloves, surprisingly, uh, because it, although it was midsummer, uh, she was wearing gloves, and she said, Diane, uh, the medium, said she was wearing gloves. Um, the other thing, she stopped by the bridge there and could see uh, uh, Muriel taking some money or making some money, and uh, she had a basket there. Well, uh, it was a fact that uh, her parents uh, were living on a farm, and they, had, uh, they were keeping chickens, and they were selling eggs to various people. And one of Muriel's tasks uh, uh, was to uh, take some eggs down to the railway bridge and sell them to the uh, uh, one of the train drivers. Uh, she said she received an injury to her head. Uh, that fitted in with the opinion of the pathologist, Dr. Stadden at the time, uh, who said that, um, in his opinion, Muriel was struck from behind uh, on her head, which rendered her unconscious. And she was, uh, of course, uh, raped and uh, sexually assaulted in the most sadistic manner. She said that uh, there was a connection uh, with the railway. Well, of course, there was a railway running uh, close to the, to the farm and through the woods. Um, and Muriel would be uh, crossing the railway bridge there every day to go back and forth to school. Uh, it was uh, a very, very rainy day. Um, there was nobody about, and of course nobody heard her screams, if she screamed. Uh, nobody heard the, the, um, uh, the, the shots. She was shot twice, and this is what Diane said. And she also mentioned a pistol, as opposed to an, any other type of firearm, like a revolver or a rifle or a shotgun. It was, in fact, a a four or five uh, American automatic pistol. Join us again next time when Diane Lloyd Hughes will unravel yet another psychic mystery.